Why? Because as uh, Dr. Hassan finished his uh, first speech about the importance of the students, activities and student blocks in the universities, and because of what we are facing nowadays. Nowadays we are in front of student blocks and the lack of awareness of the student activity, uh, let's say, student organizations, and it has a big impact on all the students because they became out of knowledge about the Palestinian cause, or they are not highly interested in understanding this, uh, the, the details of this uh, problem. And the other uh, impact that the respect among the students toward these uh, blocks and toward the councils came less than had been in the 80s and in the 90s. And this affected uh, the leadership mobilization in the Palestinian society. And I think, I think the main victim in this uh, fiction is the girls more than the boys. Because the girls in the Palestinian society lost their first platform to gain skills of leadership and to become a future leaders. And the universities and the plaques and the uh, councils in the past and the, the elections had been the first gate and the only gate for the girls to become a leaders in the future. So it's for, for all these reasons, I, we, uh, I would go to summarize what are the reasons that lead to these facts. And I will not tackle the issue how to overcome, but I think it's very important to think about the reasons how to overcome these uh, obstacles Otherwise, I, I, I think we are uh, living in a very difficult uh, future, okay? So, uh, the student uh, councils after 1993 Oslo Accord faced a serious challenges throughout the peace process, which still cast a shadow over the overall work of the councils until now. The reasons stands behind that are I classified as three reasons. The first one, the increase, increasing the political dimensions in student activities. It happened immediately after signing the Oslo Accord in 1993. The student plots at that time divided between supporters and against the peace process. This policy has led to alliance in the student council's union based on the position towards the peace process. At that time, we found the councils formed from the religious mainstream and the left mainstream. And at the same time, turned Fatih as a student plot to be one of the arms of the PNA in the university. <coughs> In the universities. The second phase is moving from the political stance to the student pure activities or pure job. We called it uh, I didn't know it in English. But it reformist is, demands. Reformist uh, demands. Uh, demands. Or demands. Demands. Uh, demands. demands. But demands, it's yeah. demands. Ah. It's yeah. not strategic. It's tactical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why, why this happened? And what are the reasons behind uh, this fact? Political preoccupation of student councils led student councils to be targeted by several quarters. The, the 
Incubation, PME, and Administrations for Several Reasons. Everyone has his own reason, but the, at the end, the student councils had been the victim. For the occupation, targeting student blocks and the targeted student blocks and doubles the penalty to join the student blocks more than punishment to join the party itself. As for the Palestinian Authority, they start dealing with these universities as an important arena for the opposition and therefore it is important to control them and reduce the influence of the student blocks so as to facilitate the process of control and let's say lowering the impact of the opposition. The university administrations has been disturbed by the instability in the universities as a result of the transfer of political conflicts from outside to inside universities, which led to instability in the process of learning and thus became, became the universities inspired to try to reduce the role played by the student plans. These three reasons played a major role to move the uh, student councils and blocks from political stance to be to, to uh, student demands. <coughs> third step, it's the third reason is the political division. Political division played a central role in weakening the work and the activity of the student blocks within the universities. As I said, political division played a central role in weakening the work and the activity of the student blocks within universities. Division refocus again on the importance of empty, emptying the student councils from political dimension, depoliticization, and here several efforts have combined to perpetuate this reality. Students themselves became complained the clash between the parties in the universities based on political views, as well as transforming them political system, as well as the transformation in the political system and the society from party to technocrat led that to empty the society from policy and speaking about politics and get, get the technocratic style of life as a priority. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Raid. Uh, طبعا الدكتور حسن ايوب استعرض تاريخ حركه الحركه الطلابيه الفلسطينيه طبعا مرورا بالانتداب البريطاني وانتفاضه حائط براق الى عام 1932 ومؤتمر الطلاب الفلسطيني الذي دعا الى الاضراب العام وحتى الوصول الى النكبه وجمعيه الطلاب الفلسطينيين وانشاء الاتحاد العام لطلبه فلسطين آه إلى عام 1967 وإنشاء منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية والتي تعتبر تغير في حركة التحرر الفلسطيني من خلال دمج الحركة الطرابية في العمل السياسي من أجل التحرر آه وصولا أيضا إلى الانتفاضة الأولى وأهمية الجسم الطلابي آه في عملية التحرر تحت مظلة آه منظمة التحرير الفلسطينية آه أيضا آه بعد بش آه طبعا دكتور رائد حكى عن حركة الطلاب في الجامعات الفلسطينية نشاطات حركة الطلاب في الجامعات التحديات التي تواجهها حركة الطلابية في الجامعات الفلسطينية ومن أهم هذه التحديات أسباب سياسية ومنها من هو طبعا الانتماءات السياسية بين من هو قابل أو رافض لاتفاقية أوسلو أيضا اتجاههم إلى النشاطات المطلبية والابتعاد عن العمل السياسي قليلا 
او كثيرا ما بعرف ايش كثيرا طبعا الى الاحتلال ومتطلبات اوسلو كمان كان هذه كانت هذه من ضمن التحديات التي تواجه الحركه الطلابيه الفلسطينيه انتهاء بإدارة الجامعة نفسها التي حاولت دائما الوصول إلى حالة من الثبات في الحياة الأكاديمية فهذه مجمل التحديات التي واجهت الحركة الطلابية الفلسطينية في الجامعة الفلسطينية طبعا آخر شيء طبعا the last but not the least يعني الدكتورة سماح صالح head of the department of sociology and she is going to talk about Palestinian women between the hammer and the anvil, the challenges uh, uh, of Palestinian women students within university political movements. So I know that most of you are tired since you are here. I don't know what time early morning. So I will try to be quick. So relying on uh, the presentation before, we could see that the political move is uh, that student council within the universities are connected to uh, political uh, parties. So I want to take you to, I, I want you to look at this image. So looking into this image and the other images, I'm going to see for the campus, we can see how the majority of its citizens are women. More than 50% of the students are female. But still, we don't find a representative number in the student council. Women students are activists in the political movement, play many roles in, in uh, elections, uh, campaign. They play roles in recruiting members, participating in all the election campaigns. Not to exaggerate, women can be the mobilizer and the part who decide the election results. But still, with all these roles, and being the major, a majority, still they are absent from the general secretary of the student council, or they can be the minority if, if it happened to, to include them. But the question is why Palestinian women, or um, why they are, they, are, they are present during the election process, and then they are absent from the student council. This paper is based on my observation as a staff in the university. In addition to some narratives I have collected while doing my PhD, which discussed uh, the experience of Palestinian women political prisoners incarceration in Israeli colonial prisons, that some of the participants were sentenced because of their involvement in the Palestinian student movements inside universities, which is related to political movements outside university. So I started with my students. I, ha I have asked them uh, why women are not representative in student body. I got some answers which I could summarize easily because our families, they said, this is my students' answer. Uh, because our families forbid us to be part of any, anything connected to politics or because of the fear of being arrested by the Israeli occupation. Uh, we don't rely on the political movements in the, inside the universities to solve our problems or because it is mixed and many men are there, so it is not acceptable by the culture. Palestinian, Palestinians live in an unstable and unpredictable political life and this influences the, conser the conservative culture which in turn shapes practices when it comes to women's contribution to the national struggle. When it's crucial for the, for the encounter with the Israeli occupation, it is accepted for women to take part in resistance through activities that provide social services for the community. Or through domestic tasks, Palestinian women become political subjects without a choice. They are involved in all aspects of political life, even just being in the in domestic place. Daily life in Palestine is centered on politics, from the music and media to everyday discussions. In a documentary about the architecture of violence, Wiseman argues that as a result of cons constant invasion of Palestinian homes and cities, and the ubiquitous checkpoints, private space is forced open dissolving the boundaries between public and private. Through the Israeli strategies of exposing private space, Palestinian women become visible, forcing the community and media to acknowledge their presence. But this exposure makes women feel they are always watched, not just by Israeli occupation, but also by their own community. 
which is anxious about their owner, Palestinian women are thus subject to what Foucault termed the panoptic gaze, a constant social surveillance. This restricts women's mobility and their ability to freely talk, but take part in political activity. Palestinian women, therefore, learn how to negotiate this visibility, becoming silent political subjects and creating space in which to take part in the resistant movements <coughs> or student bodies body inside universities. Shalhoub argues that women de develop various methods to participate in the political struggle as invisible actors and invisibility necessitated by the patriarchal culture, highly charged um, symbolization of womenhood as an object of protection. And though Palestinian women might be physically visible on the, on the front lines, they are most often unnoticed and unrecognized in the conservative uh, community. Nevertheless, they exhibit a great deal of power and resilience. Women become involved in resistant movements and take roles in military groups uh, secretly, as the male dominant culture deems women's participation in such action inappropriate. This can be a way for women students to take role and to involve in, um, in politics by keeping negotiating restrictions. Khawla was one of the participants in my research. She belongs to a strict conservative family that place, places rigid restriction on women in order to protect the family reputation, especially as they live in a refugee camp where everybody knows and watches each other. In her youth, Khawla was aware of all the social surveillance and restriction, but she insisted to herself that she wanted, she wanted to be a freedom fighter. She didn't under, understand her desire to fight in gender terms, as she recounted to me later. I never thought about myself as a woman, or a feminist, or, or about doing something to confirm the, um, uh, the importance of uh, women's roles. I just wanted to be part of the national movements. I don't claim I had any feminist awareness. For from an early age, Haula kept searching for ways to become a, a, an activist and to take roles in resisting the occupation. When she was a student in the university, she sought out the political movement and was recruited. Women create a rhythm in their everyday lives in order to camouflage their activism. For example, they say they are volunteering in a community center that is part of their school or visiting a friend or a family member. These excuses require skills of negotiation and form of component of their space of negotiation. Bahabha defined negotiation in his discussion of third space. Here he draws attention to the structure of iteration that inform political movement in both senses of the word that attempt to articulate an, an antagonistic and oppositional elements. Palestinian women repeatedly coming home late on specific days of the week or claiming to visit friends it, it, is part of the, politic, the politics to create the space that allows them to be in military groups and to manage the threat of social punishment from their family. Okay, so you can see this statement, which you can read. I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to discuss it. How they grow accustomed to what she would face when she was late home and learn how to deal with it. She used to go out to meet with her military group's leaders to be trained. Her family were concerned about her constant delays. In the traditional conservative culture, a woman cannot stay outside late at night without being accompanied by a relative, or she put her family's reputation at risk. People will start talking and making their own assumption about her activities. Khawla had to face in intensive questioning and sometimes violence. In the passage above, which you can see, she associated her family questions, families, uh, with the interrogation process, in which the, the, the interrogator wants to know every detail. For her, both situations require smooth. Khawla knew 
she would face punishment and would be locked up in her house. But after a while, her family would give her space again. She described herself as a revolutionist who knew the social law but was challenging it. Having acknowledged about the social space they live in makes women more comfortable in this space of negotiations, allowing them to follow their own will and also to deal with the social pressure of everyday life and the violence they may face. University Student Council is a mirror for the community that women are always present in the grassroots, taking many roles as mobilizers and activists, but when it comes to the top, they are always absent or not representative. To end, I can say that Palestinian women students are between the hammer of the patriarchy and the anvil of the Israeli occupation that use the conservative culture as well against women in general. Thank you. شكرا دكتورة سنة على البرزنتيشن البرزنتيشن طبعا يعني the just in brief ممكن نحكي إنه خمسين في المية طبعا أو أكثر من خمسين في المية من الطلاب في الجامعة هم من الإناث ولكن سؤال أو الملاحظة الحقيقية أنا لا تمثيل لهم في المجلس الطلابي تمثيل حقيقي بالرغم من الأدوار المهمة التي تلعبها المرأة وبالرغم من ذلك فهم غائبون من هذه المجالس أو أقلية فيها هناك طبعا عدة أسباب لغياب دور المرأة في المجالس الطلابية ومنها أو من أهمها العائلة التي لا تؤمن بالعمل السياسي للمرأة أو أن إلى حد ما ثانيا الاعتقال وثالثا عدم الثقة بتجربة طلابية بحل المشاكل طبعا تغير دور المرأة في الحركة الترابية وهي يعني في تغيرات ولكن لا يتم إدراجها في العمل السياسي بالرغم من دورها المهم داخل البيت والمرأة أيضا أصبحت أكثر ظهورا من خلال ممارسة الاحتلال التي تفرق التي لا تفرق ما بين الرجل والمرأة المرأة أيضا هي جسم سياسي صامت يعمل على خلق مجالات جديدة في العمل السياسي المرأة أيضا لديها القوة للانخراط في العمل السياسي وبشكل سري وذلك من خلال محاولاتها الدائمة لتقليل هذه التحديات التي تواجهها فالمرأة يمكن أن نستنتج هي ما بين سنديان الاحتلال وصخرة العائلة والتقليد دورها كبير في عملية التعبئة ولديها نشاطات كثيرة ولكنها عندما يتم النظر إلى الأعلى لا نجد لا نجد المرأة أو ما تستحق من دور في في هذا المكان شكرا لكم. Now we open the door for questions. If you have any questions, we start with Alia. We will have two or three questions. Okay, I have um, a couple questions already, but I'll be fast. Uh, first is for um, Parker and Enrico. If you could share your thoughts um, about BDS as Students for Justice, um, student movements within the higher education in the U.S., and the role, if you would say, in your opinion, of misogyny by Zionist forces or sexism or how that plays out in a lot of these battles. Then my second question is for Dr. Ra Dr. Hassan and Dr. Sama about if you have any comments on the non-political student union, um, student societies within al Najah and the, the way women are taking on, I would say, more leadership roles within those academic non-political but still public spaces. Um, that's a really important um, question. I definitely see a lot of misogyny um, in the Zionist movement in the United States, um, especially in the backlash. Um, a couple of different examples of how this manifests. Um, one, Dr. Abdelhadi talked about um, earlier some of the posters that are used by the Horowitz Center and smeared across campuses across the United States. And um, 
one of the most striking of those posters is um, of Rismia Ote and the um, imagery that they use in order to degrade her um, and the sexist imagery, the anti-Arab, Islamophobic imagery that is used against her specifically. Um, and I think that's one example of the misogyny. And then two, a more specific Tufts example, um, is that the Zionist organizations at Tufts, um, there are several of them, are all dominated by white Ashkenazi Jewish men. Um, and it's almost predominantly, almost exclusively, I would say 90% based on just like non-official numbers are um, white men. And so I think that that says a lot about um, the Zionist movement um, on elite college campuses um, and about kind of the sexism at play um, there as well. And I also want to be frank that there is sexism within the um, like SJP movement as well that we also have to be transparent about misogyny, sexism, and, and issues that happen within um, even the pro-Palestine movement. Um, and I think that's important. Any other questions? So I'll be brief. Um, one, I just want to preface this by saying um, SJP makes it a point, or at least we try to, to make it a point to, to take our BDS initiatives from Palestinian organizations. Um, the call for BDS is put out by Palestinians, and it's, it's our responsibility to, to, to do what people ask of us. Uh, that being said, again, I don't, uh, as Parker alluded to, you can't divorce a discussion about sexism from racism, from Islamophobia, right? Because some of the most violent acts that have occurred on my campus have been against women in the hijab, with them being torn off by predominantly white male students who obviously have Zionist tendencies, or in some cases, Nazi tendencies, right? Um, I think one of the things that happens, though, is because there's such violent acts, women on our campuses, especially women of color, Muslim women, are forced into this constant state of anxiety and, and, safe, uh, and uh, um, fear for their own physical safety, which is not how university campuses should exist. Um, a lot of the, sort of the initiatives uh, that come from coalitional work uh, with the Black Student Union, with uh, the Chicano Students Association, with the, the Queer Student Association, actually comes out of a need to protect physically and mentally th those students' well-being. Um, that's, that's sort of a reactionary mechanism to uh, patriarchy, but at the same time, it's something that we, we really have to engage with because, uh, honestly, the heart of all social movements are women, from Black Lives Matter to, to Palestinian women who, who generate change in everything that they do. I hope that... Got it, your question yeah, thank a bit. You very much. Uh, thank you very much. I have a few questions and make it very brief. Uh, I think for, uh, and I'm not going to ask Parker and uh, Enrico because I'll get to ask you throughout the delegation. So I'm going to ask my Palestinian colleagues here. Uh, I think for, for uh, Dr. Hassan and for Dr. Ayman, right? Uh, right, I'm sorry. Uh, Dr. Hassan, when you were talking about the history of GOPS, you talked about 1951 and you jumped to 1959. And I was wondering if you, the re, if you had skipped over the Arab national movement and the role that it played, because one of the students earlier actually talked about that. Was it Sakota Sahawan, or was it in order, kind of like, because just to rush through and get the information, or because you actually did have some kind of a formulation that you were trying to critique or argue or whatever, if you can explain that. And for uh, uh, Dr. Ra'ed, when you were talking about things that have changed after 1993 in the, in the movement, uh, is did the whole movement become sort of uh, this uh, um, professionalized and so on? Because if this is the case, what, how do we explain all these students getting arrested, all these students, because not the whole student movement is involved, unless I misunderstood what you were saying. But if that is what you were saying, if this is, how do we explain the fact that I watched the debates, for instance, in Birzeit, when they were having the debates for the student blogs, and I was... I really wanted to get all my students, I wish there were subtitles to get them to kind of look and watch and see the engagements and the involvement and the debates and so on. And I realized that some of it is performance, I realize some of it has to do with exhibitions, some of it has to do with the competition between factions. Nonetheless, the, the intense participation was actually quite impressive. So that's 
I'm, I'm, I don't know how what you do with that or something, but it's a question that maybe I need to read also the whole research to understand and to be fair. Uh, for Dr. Sanah, Samah. For Dr. Sanah, I was just uh, wondering in building on what Enrico and Parker said about the whole question of misogyny, because we are where there is the hammer and the anvil, or that, and I think it's also for us it's the hammer and the anvil because on one hand. We don't want to cover up the dirty laundry. On the other hand, there is this all these colonialist orientalist discourses that construct Palestinian women, Arab women, Muslim women in a certain way that we can never come out of it. So we're always constantly defined before we even enter the scene. So I was just wondering the frameworks that you use. So you mentioned Foucault, for instance, and the Panopticon. Isn't there a panopticon over everybody, all the youth? Isn't there a panopticon over the whole Palestinian society? And all, are all the, the students, are all the Palestinian female students kind of like confronted with that? And are always the choices are whether you are going to escape the family pressure to participate or, or is it or not? Or are there multiple other ways in which, including the part whether you participate in order to become professional and work in the Palestinian Authority or not, or one of the NGOs, or of the banks, and so so there are different pressures that did occur before the Palestinian movement split into NGOs. NGOs. Everybody was an NGO in a small n, small g, small o, and now there is the NGOs with capital N, capital G, capital O, and there is the government. So it, it presents a certain way for even thinking about the whole so question. Dr. Reba, what's gender. the question? I, I, I think she understood my question. <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are all there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make it short. Thank you so much, Reba, for, for your question. Uh, actually, I uh, sort of um, mentioned that in passing, that the, the first uh, attempt at organizing students Palestinian students took place in Egypt, in Cairo, not, not in Palestine. Sure. So um, the years between the Nakba and the uh, 1967 and the uh, establishment of the PLO, those years that I call the missing years uh, for Palestinians. Why? Because Palestinians almost lost every, possible, uh, every possibility for their agency because they, they lost their homes and, you know, two-thirds of the Palestinians were expelled from their homes. Their national movement was shattered and was uh, uh, scattered all over in the, in the Arab region. And the very structure of Palestinian society was fragmented as a result of the Nakba. So it was very difficult for Palestinians to reorganize. That included, include, included Palestinian students. Then we started to establish again, uh, uh, not our only identity after 1967, but uh, uh, simultaneously, our organizational uh, uh, mechanisms and tools, including Palestinian student uh, movement. In between, uh, Palestinians, almost all of them, uh, all activist Palestinians, were part of this Arab National Party or that, or Arab Communist Party or, or that, or even Muslim Brotherhood and Ba'ath. Okay, so uh, at the time it was the euphoria of Arab nationalism and being 